Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 21st day of November, and today's topic is titled, Getting by Giving. And before we get started, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen, and uh, praise the Lord for that. All right, so we're going to sing the Scripture Song first from John 5, 24. And so press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. <clears throat> John five twenty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. <clears throat> Verily, verily, I say unto you, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, And believeth on him that sent me, Hath everlasting life, and everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death death unto life from death unto life, unto life. <clears throat> Amen. And that is Jesus speaking. Praise the Lord. All right. And that's the truth. You can't uh, have everlasting life without putting your faith and trust on Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So now it's time to get into today's topic from the Baptist, Baptist Bread Devotional. And also be reading uh, from the other devotional book today. Um, so be reading from both of those books today, from the Boots on the Ground book also. So let me get started on the Baptist Bread devotional topic titled Getting by Giving for this 21st day of November. And it says here in Philippians 4, 10a, and then 16 and 17 says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. For even in Thessalonica he sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that my that may abound to my to your account. Uh, Philippians four ten a and sixteen and seventeen, amen. And today's author is G G. That would be the initials for uh, Guy Goodall, and he's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Hudson Falls. New York. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of uh, getting by giving. <clears throat> and he writes here in big bold letters, giving. This one word sums up the entire gospel and the fruitful life of all believers. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. John 3, 1, uh, uh, 3, 1 and then uh, 16. So, um, I think that was supposed to be three, uh, three sixteen. Not sure why they had the one there, but it's actually John three sixteen. Amen. It must have been a typo. All right. So that's uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. All right. Continuing, on, he says, Jesus taught the disciples, "Give, and it shall be given unto you." Luke 6.38 uh, We live in a world that lusts for getting, but so few, even in Christian circles, long to be givers. Paul wrote the book of Philippians from Rome as he waited execution. His words uh, at the last indicate that plainly. Yet he rejoiced and taught the church to give. How could he have, how could he have that focus? Uh, so that was a question. How could he have that focus? The setting did not contribute um, 
the setting did not contribute to a spirit of rejoicing, giving. He was uh, in bonds, uh, one thirteen of Philippians, uh, in reading about Roman prisons. Um, even the best of conditions were uh, were terrible. One thing that caused his rejoicing was the servant uh, mentality. Paul considered himself and those who worked with him servants of Jesus Christ. Verse 1-1, one, one, uh, or chapter 1, verse 1 of Philippians. A uh, servant is uh, submissive to his master's will, whether he likes it or not. Another matter that motivated him was the Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul uh, loved Jesus Christ, and he would suffer anything for him. See Philippians 3, 1 through 11. So let's go to Philippians 3, 1 through 11. All right, Philippians 3, 1 through 11. <clears throat> All right, it says, Finally, my brethren, uh, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To um, me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Uh, beware of dogs, beware of evildoers, beware of the conc uh, concision, uh, for we are the circum uh, circumcision uh, which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath uh, wherefore, or whereof he might tr uh, trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were given to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, uh, Christ, uh, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And he found in him not having uh, mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any mean, means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Amen. <clears throat> so that's the first uh, 11 verses of um, Philippians chapter 3. And continuing, it says, Paul considered giving his own life a simple act if it would glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 1, uh, verses 20 through 22. Uh, learn to get by giving. He concludes the message for today. So learn to get by giving. Amen. And Christ gave it all. He laid down his life for you and for me and took it up again the third day according to Scripture. And that's the greatest gift ever is eternal life. And praise the Lord uh, that he can wash away your sin if you'll just humble yourself and trust him as your Savior. Amen. All right. So that is the end of the topic. Getting by giving. <clears throat> Amen. All right. So now I'll go ahead and grab the other devotional book here and read this devotional. I was looking at it and it looked like a good one. I didn't really read it, but uh, the title sounded pretty good. So... I'd read it to you, and this is from the Boots on the Ground uh, devotional book, and this is written by Randy uh, Wells, and the title for this one is A Faithful Copy, and this was uh, taking place on the 21st of November, 1864, and it says in Deuteronomy 17, 18, And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Deuteronomy 17, 18. All right, so it says here, The Gold Star uh, Mothers Organization was initially started for mothers who had lost a son or daughter in World War II. Yet long before the Gold Star Mothers, one mother received a written personal condolence 
from the President himself on 21st November 1864, President Abraham Lincoln is reported to have composed a letter to Mrs. Lydia Bixby. The Bixby letter, as it became known, expressed the President's sympathy on the loss of Mrs. Bixby's sons during the American Civil War. A copy of the letter was then published in the Boston Evening Transcript newspaper for four days later. Even popular culture grabbed the letter. In the 1998 war epic uh, Saving Private Ryan, Ryan General uh, George C. Marshall's character uh, recites the letter to two of his staff officers, quoting the letter uh, verbatim. Among historians, there is debate over the authorship of this letter. There are some who suggest that the letter may not have been penned by Lincoln himself, but by his secretary, John Hay, as no one has produced the original displaying uh, his handwriting. In actuality, the fact that the original had has not been produced is no uh, great obstacle to authenticity, since the newspapers published it so quickly after it was written. Most people recognize the sheer volume of reproductions that have agreed over the years as a strong testament to the legitimacy of the letter. A similar debate, although with far greater consequences, exists over the preservation of the Bible, since there are no original manuscripts still in existence for this most sacred book. When people fail to uh, realize uh, is, or what people fail to realize is that God promised to preserve His word. Amen. Psalm twelve six through seven, Matthew twenty four thirty five, and Isaiah forty verse eight are the references. And it says to do so, He used human instruments to make faithful copies of His word. And those copies are no less the uh, word of God than if we possess the original manuscripts. The Lord promised to preserve his word through every generation, and we can certainly trust that he has done so. Amen. So let's go ahead and read these uh, passages here. Psalm 12, 6 through 7 is the first one. So go to Psalm 12 and then 6 through 7. So Psalm 12. And verses 6 and 7. Alright, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Amen. So that's the first one. And let's see, what's the second one here? Matthew uh, twenty-four thirty-five. So Matthew 24... 35, all right, Matthew 24, and verse 35, let's see here, all right, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, amen, and then the final one is uh, Isaiah 40, verse 8, so Isaiah 40, and verse 8. Isaiah 40 and verse 8. Alright, let's see here. Alright, so, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Alright, so that is the end of the topic from the other book. Praise the Lord. Okay, so put that aside there. Put that over there. And now it's time to get into today's hymn and hymn story. And so this is the hymn and hymn story from Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. So let me see here. So Nothing But the Blood of Jesus, written by Robert uh, Lowry. And this was written in 1876. And so I was looking at the this uh, hymn book that I have uh, that I bought a while back. It's titled... Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs, and it was written by, uh, the publishing group is, um, that would be, um, Melody Publications, and so there is actually six stanzas here, so I'll go ahead and sing y'all six stanzas the best I can, and then we'll get into the hymn story. 
So again, this is um, if you have a copy of this book, it's 317 in this book here. Um, and it's uh, it says it's um, the blood of Christ. It's under, and it says a spiritual song, and um, so written by Robert Lowry, 1826 to 1899. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and I'll sing you all six stanzas here. All right, here we go. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow <clears throat> that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> this is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now I now by this I've overcome nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now by this I'll reach my home nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> glory, glory, this I, thus I sing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. All my praise for this I bring, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. All right, and also uh, here in this book, there's uh, references that are on each of the stanzas, so I'll read you those. Um... And the first reference for stanza one is um, Revelation one five, and then um, and then Hebrews nine twenty two, and then the second stanza we have here uh, says First John one seven, and then uh, Romans five nine, and in the third stanza the references are Hebrews nine twelve, and then um, Colossians one fourteen, and then the um, fourth uh, stanza is Romans 3.25, and then 2 Corinthians 5.21, and then the fifth stanza is 1 John 5.4, and then 2 uh, Corinthians 5.1, and then the sixth stanza, uh, the reference is Psalm 30.12, and then Hebrews 
thirteen fifteen, and then for the uh, refrain, uh, the passages are Psalm fifty one seven and Acts four twelve. <clears throat> All right, and then on the bottom here it says the simplicity of this hymn has made it a favorite for generations. Introduced by Ocean Grove, um, or excuse me, introduced in Ocean Grove, New Jersey, at a camp meeting, it was received immediately by the people and became prominent, being especially useful in evangelistic and prayer meetings. Amen. All right, so that was a little information from this book, uh, Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs. Amen. And so this is the cover to it. Um, you know, it's backwards on the uh, screen there, but um, it's by um, uh, Melody Publications. And so their information is, uh, you can go to their website here at MelodyPublications.com and uh, order a copy of that if you'd like to get a copy of that. Amen. All right, now it's time to get into the hymn story for this hymn. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. And this was written by Robert Lowry and written in 1876. And the passage is from Hebrews 9.22 will be the uh, passage. So Hebrews 9.22. Go there to Hebrews 9 and verse 22. All right, so verse 22 says, um, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. Amen. All right, so let's see here. So there's context here for this in Hebrews uh, chapter 9. So I encourage you to go uh, read that uh, um, to get the context of what's going on here. Talking about um, how uh, how the um, how the shedding of blood is uh, no remission. And it says in verse 23, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things and the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with uh, better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the uh, figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the uh, presence of God for us. Amen. And so on and so forth. Alright, praise the Lord for that. Okay, now I'll go ahead and read you the hymn story here. Nothing but the blood. Alright, so it says here, As we thumb through our Bibles, we run across beloved and deeply understanding verses like, um, And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It is uh, the blood that makes atonement for the soul. For this is my blood of the New, Test or the New Covenant, which is shed from many for the remission of sins. The church of God, which he purchased with his own blood, Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as propitiation by his blood. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his uh, grace. With his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption, the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleans, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. And so the um, references are down here at the bottom. Exodus 12.13, Leviticus 17.11, Matthew 26.28, Acts 20.28, 20, Romans 3.24-25, Ephesians 1.7, Hebrews 9.12, and 1 Peter 1.18, and 1 John 1.7. So those are the passages there. All right, continue on. It says, uh, we shouldn't be surprised then as we study the great hymnists of his history to find their souls thrilled and their songs filled with this theme. In 1739, Count Z Zinzendorf wrote his great Jesus by blood and righteousness. That same year, Charles Wesley penned, his blood can make the foul, uh, foulest clean, his blood availed for me. The melancholy William uh, Copper. <laughs> yes, there's that William Copper again. Or as uh, it's spelled here, Cowper. <laughs> However you want to say it. Cowper or Copper. That's how it's pronounced, it's Copper. 
Amen. So the melod uh, melancholy William Copper wrote, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath the flood lose all their guilty stains. Amen. Uh, so perhaps the most popular hymn about the blood is this one, written by two men who came to Christ as teenagers. Robert Lowry, author of The Words, came to Christ at age 17, and William Doe, Doan uh, confessed Christ as his Savior while in high school. Together they wrote hymns and published gospel song, songbooks. When Nothing But the Blood was published in 1876, the attached scripture was found uh, from Hebrews 9.22. Amen. All right, and... Uh, and then so nine so Hebrews nine twenty two, and it says most of our hymnals omit Lowry's original final two stanzas, which uh, I sung for you in the other book here, and I'll read them to you again. It says now by this I'll overcome nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now by this I'll reach my home nothing but the blood of Jesus. Glory glory this I sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. All my praise. For this I bring nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. So those are the um, final two original stanzas, which uh, were put back in the other book there that I just sang the hymn out of. Amen. All right. So praise the Lord. And again, if you want those references, again, they're Exodus 12, 13, Leviticus 17, 11, Matthew 26, 28, Acts 20, 28, Romans 3, 24 through 25, Ephesians 1 7, Hebrews 9 12, 1 Peter 1 18, and 1 John 1 7. Amen. Good hymn and hymn story behind this hymn. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All right, so let's see here. Uh oh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'm not even going to try to attempt to sing this one for tomorrow's hymn, but um, uh, I'll just cut the read of the stanzas here because. Uh, this is um, one that we sing in the church, and they have the uh, trumpets before each stanza. And so this is titled God of Our Fathers, and this is written by Daniel C. Roberts and George W. Warren. Amen. So that will be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. And this was written in 1876, and the passage is from Acts 22:14. Amen. So find out about that hymn and hymn story, God of Our Fathers. Amen. I like that that hymn, and like when they do the trumpet parts. Amen. So, that would be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. Alright, now I'll go ahead and sing some scripture songs before we wrap it up for today. Alright, so we'll go ahead and do yesterday's, and then we'll conclude with today. So yesterday's was from John 3.36. And press play here. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting, everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting, everlasting life. And he believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting, everlasting life. Amen. That's the truth right there. Alright, now we'll conclude with today's. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation but just passed from death unto life. This is Jesus speaking. Amen. 
Verily, verily I say unto you, verily, verily I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death death unto life from death unto life, unto life. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, as always, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's uh, devotional topic. So tomorrow's the 22nd, and we'll be singing Matthew 6.33 and then 7.7. 7. It says, But seek... Ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. So that will be tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's devotional topic is uh, another one from the Tools of the Trade series. And I believe this is the last one. Uh, from this series, and it's titled A Shoe, and this is from Ro Ruth 4, 7a and verse 8. So that will be tomorrow's topic on this um, ending of this uh, series that we've been going through um, throughout the month, Tools of the Trade, A Shoe, and I encourage you to go back and listen to all of those uh, messages, and they're really good, really good messages there, so that will be tomorrow's topic, amen, and let me see what the topic is for the boots on the ground one tomorrow see if it's uh looks like a good one or not all right let's see all right so it's titled spousal support and that's for tomorrow so i'll have to go over it and look at it and see if it's a good one to read amen so that's the title of that one all right and then um him and Hymn story is from the hymn, God of Our Fathers. Amen. All right. And if you like a copy of this book, then it's titled Then Sings My Soul, Book 2. And it's 150 of the world's greatest hymn stories written by Robert J. Morgan. And you can find that probably at your local bookstore or online somewhere. And then the scripture song book and the CDs are available on the website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And then the Baptist Bread Devotional information is the website here. It's www.timgreenministries.org. Amen. So that's the Baptist Bread Devotionals booklet. And then the other book I read out of sometimes is titled, once again, Boots on the Ground, Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier. And this is written by Randy Wells. And there's a lot of good little stories here about different uh, battles throughout history. And then... Um, tied in with uh, uh, stuff on uh, scripture. Amen. So, good book there. And then uh, the other book here that I was singing out of today is uh, titled again Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs. And this is uh, um, available through Melody Publications. And you can go to their website at MelodyPublications.com. Amen. And a good book. And it's got um, what they did was they put all the original stanzas back into the the um into the hymns here a lot of good hymns it's um a hundred or it's um let's see how many pages it is it's a big pretty thick book here make sure how many pages are actually in this book here all right so there's 980 pages in this book amen all right so that's that book all right, well, that'll be it for today, so thanks for watching, and remember, only Jesus Christ can save your soul, and I uh, encourage you to go listen to uh, the message from Brother James this morning uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
and really good uh, salvation message there. And then also Brother Jeremy Toma brought a good message about the wise men. So go check that out. And you can look those up at uh, www.jameswnox.org or go to the YouTube channel and by typing in James, no doc, uh, James Knox Sermons. Amen. So good messages this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time. All right.